Dale Earnhardt sold more merch at NASCAR tracks in 2023 than Denny Hamlin and another Australian supercars driver is coming to NASCAR. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Dale Earnhardt, who has been dead for 23 years, almost 24, outsold Denny Hamlin in terms of merch sale trackside at NASCAR races in 2023. NASCAR put out a list of their top 15 best sellers trackside, trackside of course, from the merch haulers in 2023. And there's some surprises on the list, right? And we'll get into that in just a second. We'll also get into the Australian supercars uh, rumor, not so much a rumor, just waiting on confirmation uh, in a bit as well. But for NASCAR, Dale Earnhardt has been an absolute cash cow for them, especially his legacy. They've been weakened at burning him basically for the last 23 years. Just continue to prop him up out there because he continues to bring in money uh, like he's Taylor Swift. The guy just, you put out new merch with a three on it or with Dale's face on it, put in a NASCAR merch hauler, they're coming to get it. I almost said tent because I really love those Fanatics tents that fans absolutely hated. It was a much better shopping experience, but we're not going to get into that right now. So NASCAR puts out their list of the top 15 drivers. You can view it right here. And there's some surprise on there and some of them where you're like, hey, it makes sense. So starting at number one, you have NASCAR, which is kind of lame. Granted, some of the NASCAR merch has actually been pretty fire lately. So shout out to them. And then their 75th anniversary, you have a ton of people buying the commemorative merch as well. But it's a bit like Rob Lowe wearing the NFL hat. Kind of lame. Pick a side and, and stick with that. Number two, you have Chase Elliott. No shock here at all. Even though he missed a number of races in 2023, his fans absolutely flood his merch hauler like they're Taylor Swift fans when they see the Eras Tour hauler. It's, that's two Taylor Swift references now in the first like three minutes of this video. That's unheard of. But for Chase Elliott, you, of course he's going to be there, right? NASCAR's most popular driver. He moves the most merch out there as well. He's the new Dale Earnhardt. He's the Dale Earnhardt Jr. of NASCAR, essentially. Uh, so Chase being at number two makes a lot of sense. Number three is Kyle Larson. And again, if you've been to a NASCAR race recently, you absolutely understand that Kyle Larson moves a ton of merch. Not only does he move merch at NASCAR tracks, he's doing it at the dirt track as well. And if you've been in the stands of a race in 2023, you've seen a ton of number five merchandise out there for Kyle Larson. When he goes to the Indy 500 this year, uh, or should say in 2024, this year meaning in just a couple days, there's going to be a ton of papaya and blue merchandise out there. I hope that they are prepared because these fans that are coming to see Kyle Larson are going to absolutely flood the merch tents at Indianapolis, who still has merch tents, and they do have some haulers as well, but mostly merch tents, and they're going to make that entire speedway look orange. There's going to be a ton of it there next year. I mean, in at number four is Kyle Busch, which again, makes a lot of sense. Kyle Busch historically moves a ton of merch anyways, right? He's the M&M's guy, all the kids wanna wear. But switching teams, going to a new number, and leaving those cheating Yoders definitely enticed some people to go out there and buy more Kyle Busch merchandise, which has put him at number four. Number five is Kevin Harvick. Again, his retirement tour, you knew he was going to move a ton of merch this season. If you go to the SHR uh, merch tent, merch hauler rather, at the racetrack this past year, it was like 90% Kevin Harvick and 10% everybody else. Kevin Harvick moved a ton of merch last season. Number six is Martin Truex Jr. And I don't necessarily understand why Martin is this high. I know he has a lot of fans. He's kind of that like working class driver, even though his family has a ton of money. Uh, but Martin's been around for a long time. He probably picked up some junior fans as well when they left. And he's got the Bass Pro Shop sponsorship, which certainly plays into another uh, sect of NASCAR fans. But him at number six did surprise me a little bit. Ross Chastain being at number seven, did not surprise me because the uh, Ross Chastain don't give an F tour continue to roll on in 2023, albeit dialed it down just a little bit, but expect Ross to be right there in the top 10, if not the top five for the next few years as well, especially bringing on that Bush beer sponsorship. Number eight is Ryan Blaney, who I expect to rise up this list like the resistance next season coming off of a championship win. Super popular driver, no sh real shock here that he's this high on the list. Well, who is a shock that's high on the list is Joey Logano at number nine. I wonder if he thinks that the fans that buy all of his merch are spoiled as well. Regardless, I maybe underestimated how many fans Joey Logano actually has, unless this is all being carried by like the Northeast. But Logano, sure, he wins sometimes, but he's not exactly a great like protagonist. He's not a great villain. He's just kind of a dork, but he moves merch. So Congrats to him and that number 22 team. And then at number 10, you have Dale Earnhardt Jr., who hasn't raced in the Cup Series full-time since the end of the 2017 season. 
And he continues to just run one or two races in the Xfinity series every year, and that puts him top 10 in merch sales at NASCAR tracks. Honestly, I am a bit surprised that he's only 10th. I maybe expected him to be like 7th or 8th, somewhere in that range, just because of all of the merch that they sold at the All-Star races past year and everything else that they're moving. I mean, if you stop by the JRM merch hauler whenever you're at the racetrack, there's a ton of Dale Jr. merch. At number 11, we have William Byron, which again, makes sense, right? The number 24 fans finally have a non-Nepo baby to cheer for if they didn't go and join the Chase Elliott fan side. Granted, you could be part of that NASCAR sect that thinks that he might be Rick Hendrick's grandson and thus then a Nepo baby, but I'm not getting into that. You can go look that up on your own, but he wins a lot of races. No real shock to see him moving some merch in 2023. Coming in at number 12, you have Dale Earnhardt Sr., again, been dead for 23 years, but he continues to be an absolute cash cow, like I said earlier, for NASCAR and for Teresa, who continues to more than likely cash all of those checks as they come in. And then at number 13, you have Denny Hamlin, who, you know, might be your favorite driver on the racetrack, but he's not beating them in terms of merch sales. Couldn't even beat out a guy that's been dead for 23 years, and Denny's got three Daytona 500s. Dale never did that. Granted, Dale won seven championships, and Denny continues to never want to do one of those, uh, so there might be a reason for that. But Denny trying to become the villain just doesn't really fit that whole villain fold, but maybe we'll see him move up the rankings in 2024. Coming in at number 14 is Hendrick Motorsports, which, again, they're the biggest, most successful NASCAR team out there. They're the, the two most popular drivers in the sport racing for them. The guy who won the most races last year, of course, they're going to sell a ton of merch. And then in 2024, with their new partnership with Castor to make out the team kits, they're going to sell more because that merch looks absolutely incredible. It's exactly what everyone that doesn't want the big gaudy images on the front or the back has been asking for. They essentially look like F1 team kits. They're going to cost a little bit more, but they look so much better. You can wear that out in public and not feel like an absolute idiot. Like why is a Kyle Busch number 18 car busting through your chest right now, just spewing colors all around like it was a cruise ship that crashed into the shore. It looked like Gatlinburg on your shirt, essentially. And that's not a compliment. That's not anything you ever should want um, from your from your t-shirt. And then coming in at number 15 is Alex Bowman, who continues to be one of the only drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series with an actual personality. So I'm really happy to see him break into the top 15 here as well. And he probably more than likely definitely carried over some Dale Jr. fans and a couple maybe Jimmy Johnson fans as well. But for Alex Bowman, that's pretty cool to see. So let me know in the comments. Did they miss anybody? Did you expect something to be high or any surprises there? Um, because I would love to know if your favorite driver made it in there. Moving on to the Australian Supercars news now. Cam Waters, Australian Supercar star, is scheduled to make his NASCAR Cup Series debut in 2024, at least according to Speed Cafe's newscast podcast. And Speed Cafe, if you're not familiar, is a big outlet in Australia. Really in tune with what's happening in supercars. And they say Cam Waters is scheduled to make three starts next season for Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Of course, that basically is why that entire Stage 60 program was set up for, was to bring over all-star drivers, the Project 91 of the Ford camp, essentially. And they're running David Reagan, the Daytona 500. And I know some fans aren't super psyched about that, but from a business standpoint and winning the race standpoint, it makes a ton of sense bringing Cam Waters over to run three, presumably, three road course races, again, makes a lot of sense as he explores a possible full-time move to NASCAR in 2025. He has full support of his Monster Energy sponsorship to make this move over to NASCAR for these three races to see if, you know, maybe he wants to weigh that out. When he does come over, he'll be the third supercars driver in two years to make a start in NASCAR's top series. Of course, Shane Van Gisbergen famously won in his debut at the Chicago Street Course back on the 4th of July weekend. Brody Kostecki made his first NASCAR Cup Series start at the Indianapolis Road Course for Richard Childers Racing, and he'll be making more starts for RCR in 2024. And now Cam Waters is coming over as well. So we'll have three Australian supercars drivers in the Cup Series at select times in 2024, which can't be good for the overall overall health of the Australian Supercar Series as they continue to also try to appease Ford, who's been massively down uh, since the switch to their Gen 3 car. Big news there, for sure. Cam Waters is a really big talent, and moving him over makes a lot of sense. And a lot of NASCAR teams right now are looking at Supercar's drivers as 
interesting prospects because in the playoff era, getting one of those drivers to win a road course race in the regular season and then locking you into the playoffs, thus securing a pretty good payday at the end of the year, is worth the risk for teams right now to try to get them up to speed on ovals. Listen, we know ovals are a work in progress. We know you're really, really good on road courses. Win a road course race and we'll worry about the rest later is maybe the risk that some teams are willing to take. So big news on that front as well. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.